uh, live stream has started. Okay. Nobody on it at the moment, which is good. There's loads on the live stream this morning on the uh, writing session, by the way. The... There's about eight that watched it all the way through. Right. Which is interesting. I thought that was a terrific session. It was. And it just goes to show that when when the schools make an effort, it makes our our job so much better and easier and and, 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 and improves the quality of the session no end. Yes, because you've got very strong, you've got Turn Furlong, Bolton Parish, Truro High. John Moore, you've got four schools who really know what they're doing. So it leads the way with everyone else, doesn't it? Definitely. It ups the game. I'm sure it does. Right. Uh... I thought the punctuation was better too. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So... Tell me, when I respond to a blog post, do I have to fill in the little form that gives my name no. and the email? I just write what I want to write and then click submit. Yeah, just put pi in the top in the name box and it'll go. It'll be fine. Yeah, it's worth putting your name in so the ki the kids know that it's you that's commenting. Okay. Okay, we're ready to go. Yeah. Oh, Rachel Law was commenting as well, which I might just message her to say she'd like to do a little bit more of that. <laughs> I did wonder too whether um, whether Kim, we could invite Kim to do some commenting. Yep. Okay, ready to go. I'll drop her a message. Good morning, everybody, and welcome to week three of Teaching Live Grammar. Uh, great to be here. So it's an, uh, For a change, the weather's really nice up here in North Lancashire. The snowdrops are out in the garden, um, which is always a sign that, that spring is, is on the dis distant horizon. Um, and I'm all ready to go. We had uh, a a little bit, there was some technical weird stuff going on with the Teaching Live website last week. Uh, people were submitting uh, posts and the school name wasn't attached. So um, if there are some posts that have somehow got lost somewhere, um, that would be, um, it would be great if you could let me know. If Just have a look through your um tag of of children's writing on on your on the website and if if you've got you think you've submitted uh, uh if you think children have submitted work and i haven't uh added it to your tag cloud it will be helpful to know i'm not quite sure why it's happening because it doesn't work for me whenever i try submitting anything the site works exactly as it should so it's a really weird one so if, if it's happened to you and you, you, your children submit stuff please let me know that you've submitted so we can have a look and try and figure out what exactly is going on. It's a strange one, but I'm not sure what it is. But anyway, uh, enough of that. For, for most people, it's working as it should. So, Pi, how are you this morning? Very well, actually. Uh, leg much better. Um, still got a way to go, but much better. Feeling on absolutely firing on all guns. So, so the, the salsa dancing lessons, when do they start? Um, right. Well, <laughs> I doubt whether that's ever going to happen, but um, no, feeling really good now. Thank you. Um, so ready to rock and roll um, with the work this morning. And each time we meet, it's going to get a little bit harder. So we're on to phrases and clauses now. Uh, David, before we get into that, how are you faring? I'm very well. Thank you, Pi. Um, it's, it's the weather's OK in Charlie. I have a special mention to Mr. Clark, year six, my fellow Charlieites. Um, we're, 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 we're all good to go, I think. Okay, so we're looking at phrases 
and clauses. Clauses are rather like mini sentences, but phrases are not. Phrases are little groups of words that act together. And they're usually, not usually, they are always built around a main word. And first of all, we're going to focus on, for the game, we're going to focus on our old friend, the noun phrase. And not surprisingly, John, noun phrases are built around nouns. <laughs> so if you've got the word dog, for instance, we can make more of that dog by saying this dog or that dog or those dogs. And we can add an adjective in those hungry dogs. We can even say where they are. Those hungry dogs on the pavement are barking. Um, the are barking turns it into a sentence, but those hungry dogs on the pavement. So um, we're going to play a game, David. You're going to have to be sharp as mustard on this one. Oh. So partner A comes up with a noun. Partner B then says which one it is. So that's where you use a determiner. So if David says the word cat, I'm going to say something like, those cats, or this cat, or that cat, or a cat, or the cat, or every cat, or most cats. And in the, teacher's, in the teacher's notes, John, there is actually at the top a list of determiners people can use. But it's not going to stop there, because we go partner A is the noun, dog. Partner B is which one, the determiner, that dog. Partner A bungs in an adjective, that hungry dog. And partner B says where it is. So that's the prepositional. That hungry dog on the pavement. So that's what we're going to be doing. And you're going to need those two bits there. In fact, if you scroll down a smidge, John. No, other way. Sorry, scroll up. There it is. You can see partner A and partner B. So if you follow that pattern, David, um, I'll let you be partner A. Because <laughs> I think it's a tad easier. But at half time, you swap over, of course. Okay. So start us off with a different noun and we'll see if we can follow the pattern. Let's go with a, let's go with snake. OK, so I'm on the determiner. Uh, I can turn it to, into snakes if I want. So let's go for 10 snakes. Uh, so you've got to do an adjective now, 10 something snakes. 10 scrawny snakes. And I've got to say where they are. Ten scrawny snakes on the p in a desk, in a classroom. No, on the teacher's seat. Ten scrawny oh. snakes on the teacher's seat. OK, give us another noun. Let's do another one. Um, bubble. Many bubbles. Many beautiful bubbles. Many beautiful bubbles in the classroom. Let's go with um, footballers. Footballers. Those footballers. Those famous footballers. Now I'm going to look at that list of prepositions and I'm going to choose one. Those famous footballers behind the stadium. Uh, let's go with Ladybird. Okay. Um, that Ladybird. That beautiful Ladybird. OK, that beautiful ladybird beside the um, car. Remember, when you do the prepositional phrase, it can't have a verb in it. Yeah, that's the danger, isn't it, with this pie, is the, the temptation to put a verb in. Yes, you can't, you're not allowed to put a verb in. It has to just be where it is. And it can't say what it's doing. Um. Let's do one more. And then um, obviously at half time, after two minutes, John, blow a whistle and everyone changes over. So at half time, I'll be partner A now, John. Uh, David, sorry. So I'll give you, um, OK, I'm going to give you a teapot. teapot. That teapot. 
that. China teapot. On the shelf. Excellent. OK, that's basically it. And as long as people look at that and follow that pattern, they'll be fine. And remember, don't put a verb in when you're doing the prepositional phrase. Just say where it is. Below the clouds, behind the door, above the seat, beside the giraffe, between the pages, etc. No, no verb, just the prepositional. Right. So I'm. I'll, what I'll do, I think, Pi, is I'll oh. start the timer off, and then I'll go back to this screen. So you've got that information on your screen to oh. to remind you, because it's quite a technical game. This one, you've got it to is. be careful not to get a verb in, so you don't. You're not turning your phrase into a sentence. Exactly. So uh, you've got four minutes on the clock. I'll uh, ask you to change over from partner A to partner B at two minutes. Off we go. OK, time to swap roles. So if you were partner B, you're now um, choosing the noun.
And that bell marks the end of the game. So it's back to the Teaching Live website. And we'll go straight into Padlet Activity 1. So, so noun, noun phrases, John, are built around nouns. It's like a little clump of words around the noun. And you can actually swap that clump of words with just the noun. So you could say that enormous hungry dog on the hill barked or just say the dog barked. Um, prepositional phrases are all built around a preposition. But the key thing is you there is no verb in it. It's just where something is. So if you take the word above, we could, I've written there above the ancient wall, but I could say above the car, above the house, above the school, above the classroom. They're slightly boring prepositional phrases. So I might go for a little bit of naming it. So I might say above um, um, Queen Mary's hull. Uh, Queen Mary is a, is a boat. So I could name it, make a little bit more of it, but I'm not allowed a verb in there so i've got the prepositions down the left hand side and then you can see um and it might be worth looking at that list uh to generate your own so we've got after after the party after the lesson after the football match i'm not allowed to say what you did i just want a prepositional phrase so i'll say that again in the time on the tradition of all teachers we're not looking for a sentence there's not going to be a verb in it. It's just the prepositional phrase. So take one of those prepositions like inside and then make a prepositional phrase inside the cup, inside the classroom, inside the center of um, Jupiter, etc. So look at my list. Is that list on the um, pad, David? We can't hear what, what you're saying, but muted himself for some reason. Yes, it is. My dog was barking, so uh, <laughs> uh, okay. Yes, it's on the padlet right there for you. Okay, so all we're looking for is a series of prepositional phrases. I point out two two things, Pi. Yeah. One is apostrophes that show um, uh, possession. So against the ship's rotting hull, below the sky ship's sails. And inside the caretaker's cupboard, you need apostrophe S because it's not just the cupboard, it's the cupboard of the caretaker. And the yeah. other thing I want to say where you've used a proper noun under Fountains Hill, in fact, you've used a, an apostrophe as well, under Fountains Hill, um, above the Queen Mary's hull, um, on top of Mount Everest, um, et cetera, et cetera. So where you've got a proper noun, Make sure you capitalize it where you've got, um, you know, showing possession. Make sure you apostrophize it. Is that is that a word? Apostrophize? Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I thought I was making stuff up as I went along there. It wouldn't be the first time. So on to the Padlet. And we let's get... see. What... Yeah, a lot above the vibrant sky against Man City after Christmas inside the beautiful football stadium, inside the Earth's core. Um, well done, you've got the apostrophe right, inside the hot air balloon. I mean, strictly speaking, they're not sentences, they're just phrases. So you don't need the full stop. You don't need the capital letter and the full stop, but, it, it, you know, people are trying hard, so that's fine. Underneath the jet pl plane's engines, they're, they're not sentences because they've not got verbs in them. Um, Camille, inside Pluto. Pluto is the name of a specific planet, so it needs capitalizing so it's a proper noun uh, above the abandoned hospital up the road under the house after the basketball tournament inside the ship's rotting hull um aaron uh csj you've forgotten your apostrophe inside the ship's hull so it's the hull belonging to the ship so you need an apostrophe there so malachi's got that right underneath the jet planes engines um and Dylan, inside John Sutton's living room, you've you've uh, capitalised me, which is good, because quite often we get Pi and myself not capitalised, or David indeed. 
um, but you've missed out the apostrophe S because it's the living room belonging to me. So whereas Leo on Pi's head are his uh, glasses. On Pi's head is his hat. On Pi's head, you've capitalised it and apostrophized it as well. So well done, Leo from Botsford. Um, under two pillars, Willow from Brindle Gregson using the uh, a, a number as a determiner, which is good. I like Rayon's beside the mouth watering burger. <laughs> you can hear it's not a sentence because it's not complete because nothing's happening in inside the pot noodle. <laughs> no, I just spotted that one as well. Uh, Rasmus from Botsford. Well done. Is it Botsford or is it Bottisford? I don't know is the short answer. I, I'm tempted to say Botsford, but um, maybe it's Bottisford. So perhaps somebody from Bottisford could let us know. So Noah from Brindle, uh, Gregson, inside the Etihad Stadium. You'd need the determiner there. Um, and you need it's Etihad Stadium and Deepdale Stadium. Um, you've added a verb there where Preston played inside Preston's Deepdale Stadium. Capitalize it because it's the name of the stadium. So you can don't forget you can go back to um, your Padlet, click on the three dots and edit it. We like editing. Harry and Jack from Botsford uh, against Manchester United. Um, Jude from Fairburn has gone for the same thing. Um, I've not spotted a single one I'm disagreeing with here. Pretty much everybody's got the idea. Um, it's I've only spotted one verb in the whole 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 Padlet inside the house, inside the glowing orb. Sophia from Botsford. I'm going to I'm going to stick with Botsford until somebody tells me you're doing it wrong. Inside Zoe's oven, Shania. Um, well done. You've you've uh, apostrophe added the apostrophe and um, capitalized Zoe as well. So well done. Above a leatherback sea turtle. Leatherback, uh, Tyler is um, is one word. Now, if it's a species, a, so a leatherback sea turtle. You wouldn't capitalise that, would you, Pi? No, it's because it's not a the name of a oh, specific <laughs> thing. Yeah, it's not. Yeah, so if it was Jeremy the leatherback sea turtle, then yes. you would capitalise Jeremy, but not leatherback sea turtle. Yeah, Above, no, we've all got the idea of this, John. Very nicely. Yeah, we'll 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 go. So we'll come out of the padlet. Yeah, well done. Good work. You got, you got the feel for. That the preposition worked. phrase that yeah. worked really nicely. And, well and, we, we're, most of us were uh, adding apostrophes as well, really nicely. So we'll go uh, go straight on to the second padlet. So we've had a look at phrases. We only had a look at noun phrases and prepositional phrases. Obviously, you've got other sorts of phrases like adjectival ones. We'll have a look at those um, in the PowerPoint, but. Uh, we're now on to clauses. Now, clauses are different to phrases because they're built around verbs and you get a subject and a verb. And they can be complete sentences. So let's have a look at my. Um, my list here, the dog ate the bone. So that's a sentence. It's also a clause. The dog ate the bone. And then jumped over the bridge. So we've got two things going on here. Now, as soon as you see a verb. You're on to a clause. So the dog ate the bone and jumped over the bridge. So two things are happening. I've got two clauses going on. The dog ate the juicy bone and a sausage from the table. Now, that's different. It sounds as if there might be two clauses, but there isn't a second verb. So the clause is the dog ate the juicy bone and a sausage from the table. Uh, next one is the dog ate the bone before chewing on a sausage. Two verbs there, John. Eating the bone, chewing on the sausage. I've got two clauses. The dog ate the bone, jumped over the bridge and barked at the farmer. There are three things happening. I've got three clauses. I've got the dog ate the bone, jumped over the bridge is the second one. Barked at the farmer is the third one. So turn the red sentences into multi-clause sentences. Multi is when you've got more than one clause by using conjunctions. 
Conjunctions are joining words. I always remember those by thinking about so when I was a kid, John, we used to go um we used to go train spotting. It's not a hobby kids have now, but it meant you went along. We used to stand on the bridge um down at Hastings and watch the trains go by and write their numbers down. Um but trains have the railway the railway lines have junctions. Those are bits where one thing joins another. It's a junction. So they're joining words. Okay, let's have a look. Kevin ate a banana. Now I've got to turn it into, I've got to get another clause. So I've got to get another verb. And I've got to use a joining word. Now I've given a little box with some of those conjunctions down there. And but, so, so, that, because. So Kevin ate the banana because he was hungry. Two things are happening. He's eating the banana and he's being hungry. So two things are going on. I've got a multi-clause sentence, two clauses. Let's have a go at the car stopped. The car stops because the lights turned red. Well, uh, what did you say? Because the lights turned the red. Light turns red, yes. Yeah. Or the car stopped and um, the passenger sneezed. The car stopped, but the lorry carried on. The car stopped so that it could fill up with petrol. The car stopped until the whistle blew. The car stopped when the lights changed colour. The car stopped while the eagle landed. The car stopped after. So there are lots of possibilities of using those conjunctions, John, to create two clauses, two things happening. I think it's straightforward. Remember capital letter full stop. You've got to have two things happening. And if anybody can um, come up with a three clause sentence, that will be great. But remember, you've got to have to make it a clause. The key is the fact that there's a verb. So, um it can't be just a list of adjectives. You've got to have something happening in each clause. You've got to have an, a verb. So we'll go on to the Padlet and uh, we will see. There's a there's a new feature I've just put on. To, it's the freeze feature, which makes nobody can add it until I click a button, which mm. is really helpful for me. So I'm going to click the unfreeze button now and let mm. the children loose. Ah, uh, so that that that's right useful because one of the things that it's not to be fair to to this group, it's not been going on. But well, sometimes people like to zoom ahead and um, and they've not listened to Pi's instructions fully. So uh, that's a really good addition. Ah, Aldi from Bottesford, um, a cracking multi-clause sentence. Three clause. The man ran the marathon, drove his car on the way back, and ate when he got back. There's a bit of repetition with the word back there. Um, but on the other hand, you fulfilled the brief. Uh, uh, indie, 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 indie from Brindle Gregson Lane. The dog ate a juicy bone and a delicious burger. So you've not got a second clause in there um, because you haven't got a second verb. So the dog ate a juicy bone is your is your clause. So uh, you, you, in fact, it's the dog ate a juicy bone and a delicious burger. To make that into a second clause, um, you would have to say something like the dog ate a juicy bone and devoured the delicious burger. So you need to add a verb to the second part. Um, <laughs> Georgia from Botsford, uh, Shannon O'Hare. I think it's Shania. I mean, it is Shania. I, I ate the Fanta, but it exploded on her. Um, Tom ate the banana and choked. Ah, now that's interesting, Pi. Uh, Alfred from G GL, GL, uh, Gregson Lane, I suspect. Tom ate the banana and choked. Now, choked is is, is a verb. Yes. And so does that does that count? I mean, it's, even though it's just a single word, does that count? It's counting in my book. Yeah, I thought so. Yeah. yeah. I thought I'd better check with the oracle. Yeah, two th it's a very short clause. Yeah. Two, two <laughs> things are happening. Uh she failed the test because she didn't practice. Um Tudor uh sorry, Tia from Tudor Primary School. Yeah, that works. The car stopped so that the people could cross. Darcy from Botsford, very good. And uh, Shia from Tudor, you've got a rogue apostrophe in there. Before lighting the candles, you don't need that apostrophe, she went to prepare the feast for everyone who was coming, I think you should say. 
So we, we're getting lots of clauses, lots of things going on. Most uh, two clauses. Squirrel flew because a tree fell down. Very good. Before lighting. Yeah, that was the one you just... The car stopped and the passenger fell off the chair. Um, very good, Isabel. You need to check your spelling, um, but that works. Jude from Fairburn. The dog ate the bone, jumped over the fence and barked at its owner. Lovely. Three clauses. Boom, boom, boom. We often call that a sentence of three. <laughs> ate the bone, jumped over the fence, barked at its owner. Well done. It, uh, makes, it makes the sentence sort of jog along, doesn't it? Yeah, uh, William has done this. Uh, the the crazy crocodile saw a human, swam to the human, and ate the human. <laughs> Max from Botsford. Owen ate his bananas in front of a monkey. But let's see how many votes we got. Eight his bananas in front of a monkey. We've only got one um, clause there. So you'd have to add on another bit. Owen ate his bananas in front of a monkey and... Sneezed or whatever. And you've got a rogue apostrophe in there. Yeah, remember, only use apostrophe to show owners ownership. Now, Tasneem from Tudor. Clara sang beautifully. We've got a nice little sentence, but it's only one clause. You need to add on a conjunction. Clara sang beautifully and, and then have something else happening. Same with Aisha. An elephant roared gradually and, so you've got to get two things going on. Harishka got it. The man ate the tender burger and ran a marathon. So two things are happening. Tasmir and Tudor, you've only got one thing happening. The eagle landed on the rocky floor and you need a second thing. And Isabella from Fairburn, you've only got one thing happening. Uh, Faria from Chorley St James she drew a cat because she was bored perfect um, Faith from Brindle Gregson the cute puppy ate a dog biscuit and jumped over the small bucket walking to the puppy so I think you need a comma after bucket because you've then got another clause Ethan you've only got one thing happening the car stopped at the park we need another thing so you need a conjunction to extend your sentence and have something else going on same with Sadia from Tudor. There was a heavy storm yesterday night. And then you need a conjunction and add something on. Now, somebody, Max at Bottersford, has got a chunky monkey, ate his pickle and got very fat. <laughs> I like your chunky monkey. Uh, Kendall, well done at Bottersford. Ah, oh, now, Alistair, interesting one. The car stopped because of the red light. Actually, there's only one verb, Alistair. It's the word stopped. You could say because the red light was flashing, that would then, word flashing is would be the verb. You've got to get two verbs or three. Yeah, Harper, um, the car stopped when the light turned was red. Um Straight away, when I read that out loud, you can hear where you've you've got two verbs together that don't work, turned and was. So when the light turned red is all you turned need. Red. Yeah, the and that wind, works. Yeah, Ethan from CSJ, the wind blew, so the children stayed inside because they didn't want to freeze. Very yep. good. Uh, that's a good one. Um, that's three clauses. Yep. Tyler, the car stopped and the driver laughed. Two things happening. Well done. And uh, Rasmus, she knocked on the door and screamed at the top of her lungs. Well done. Cat's eyes slowly closed because it was sleepier. Say, dear, TPS, well done. <laughs> the car stopped and the passenger passed out. <laughs> Tyler, well done. Um, so Sophia from Botsford. The girl got out her paints, sketched her outlines and began painting. Um, you don't need that second comma because you've got and. The and, when you've got the conjunction there, you don't need the comma. The girl got out of paints, comma, right, sketched her outlines and began painting. Blaze, the red plane got all the passengers on, closed the door and flew off. Boom, boom, boom. Three things. Um, and Wens Wensley from Tudor, the dog ate the bone before eating the two sausages. Now, Faith... Uh has got a puppy jumping on my head. 
but she's not given me a capital letter, John. Uh -huh. The dog ate, Tristan from Fairburn, the dog ate his breakfast, had a nap, then watched out of the window. Very good. I think we've got this pie. Um, You're pretty much, uh, pretty much all right. Some people have forgotten to extend by using uh, a conjunction and some people are, have not done more than one verb, but most people have. Yes, and a couple of you know, little ones like forgetting to capitalise Mars, Seth from Botsford, because uh, it's uh, it's the name of a planet. Um, but generally speaking, uh, and, I'm, and most people, not too much use of apostrophes. Um, uh, arriving, driving to McDonald's, apostrophe S. Well done, uh, Ava from from BJS. So we'll come out of the Padlet and uh, we will go to the session page um, and have a look at the um, PowerPoint. Now, I think, John, that people should... I quite like it when Key Stage 2 children jot things down. Um, I read a magpie book or back of your English book, but that thing of making the odd note to remind yourself of what something is is a really good tactic. So you might want to think about that. Um, don't have to jot everything down. It's the little reminders that you need in order to remember something, because some of this, you know, noun phrases actually are in year, supposed to be taught in year two. Um, so a lot of people know about the noun phrase and building noun phrases up. Um, prepositional phrases, a lot of people know those. OK, let's go through it. So the basic of sentences, uh, we're looking at phrases and clauses. On we go. So phrase, group of words that acts together. They're always built around a main word, a head word, a lead word. They aren't sentences. And we know about noun phrases. Dog, that dog, that hungry dog, that hungry dog on the pavement. All of those things, all of those three bits are about one thing, the dog. So we're fairly familiar with that idea because we've been building those sorts of phrases for donkey's years. If we go to the next one, I think it's probably prepositional phrases. Common prepositions. I've got a list of them there. Prepositions, pres positional language, either in terms of place or time after the lessons we went home so that's a time one uh, underneath the table on top of the table beside the table so it's always where you have a preposition of an noun or a noun phrase and no verb in it just tells you where something is so we we've, we were confident with that john i think so we can go to the next one it worked really well we were yeah. we made very few mistakes now here's a little quizzy thing We've got a noun phrase, an adverb phrase, a preposition phrase, a verb phrase, and an adjective phrase. So <laughs> if you look at the first one, that sour-faced, wizened old man, what sort of phrase do you think that is, John? Um, I would say it was an adjectival phrase. Would I be right? No, you wouldn't. Would I not? Would it, in that case, um, is it a verb phrase? No, it ain't got a verb in it. Yes, it has. It's got sneezed. Uh, I'm looking at the underlined bit. Oh, sorry. It's, ah, right. That's our faced wizened old man. Yeah, gotcha. Um, well, it's, it's a noun phrase. It's a noun phrase. Yeah, because we could say that man sneezed. Yes. Just bunged in some extra stuff about the man. Now, the second one, you're going to know this one. So it's the it's the bit that's underlined. So the second one. Yes. So so this is this is talking about where it is. Yes. So that makes it a prepositional phrase. So yep. think about position. So yeah. where something and is, is its position. So it's out. a prepositional phrase. Absolutely. The third one, very slowly. So we these are these are adverbs that are describing the verb. Uh, which was moving, so I'm I'm guessing it's a verb phrase. It's not a verb phrase, but you did say what it was. It's not a verb phrase. I'm sorry, an adverbial phrase. Yes, <laughs> that's it. 
yeah, it's built around the adverb slowly. Yes. Now the third one. Oh yeah, because it's very slow. Yes, I oh, I understand that part. Yes. So it's it's not it's so uh, you're modifying slowly there. So it's very yes. slow. Yeah. Okay. The cat was very beautiful. Um, and again, oh, well, that's not that's not an adverbial phrase because it's not modifying a verb. So it must be a an adjectival phrase because it's it's describing the cat. Yes, because you can say the very beautiful cat. Yes. So that's an adjectival one. And the last one is just the words am running. OK, so by a, by a process of elimination, I'm going for a verb. <laughs> um, and I'm not sure why. So you'll have to explain it to me, Pi. Because it's built around a verb. Yeah. So that's a determined no, I am. So lose the word I and lose the word quickly. That just the just the bit am running. That's a verb phrase. It's built around the verb running. The cat was very beautiful. The phrase is very beautiful. It's an adjective one. It's built around beautiful. He was moving very slowly. It's an adverbial. It's built around slowly. Underneath the mountain is built around underneath. South face was an old man. Is built around man. That's a little bit tricky, but by thinking carefully. Very often you can sort of work it out. And I like the way you worked out the last one because there was only one option left. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, so yeah, it's working out which, what, what's the phrase is doing. Yes. So the K was, so that one's position. So, cause it's yes. got the preposition underneath. Yeah. This one very slowly is, is describing how the thing was, or he yes. was moving. So that makes it adverbial. Yeah. That one was, um, very beautiful. So those are adjectives describing the cat. So that yeah. makes an adjectival phrase. And this one is am running, which is uh, a verb phrase because there ain't anything else left to choose. Yeah. <laughs> but okay. It's describing on. the verb. <laughs> yeah. On we go. Well done. So yeah. So that's that. So yeah. If you're logic, if you think logically, yes, you can work it out. Yes, nearly always. Don't panic. Try and think about what its function is, what the job of the thing is. Clauses are different to phrases because they're built around verbs. They can be complete sentences. Something happens and you can have multi-clause sentences. So always look out for the verb. The dog ate the bone. So we've got one clause there. The dog ate the bone before jumping on the sofa. Two clauses. And then our lovely old friend, the sentence of three, he ate the bone, jumped on the sofa and snoozed for hours. Boom, boom, boom. Three things happening, three clauses. So that's easy. I think people mostly know that. Yeah, that's that's identifying verbs is, is I think we're all pretty good at that. Yeah, we're good at that. And 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 is it the case that every time you see a verb, you're go it's going to be associated with a clause? Pretty much, yes. Yeah, like I'm just kind of trying to think of an example yes. when that wouldn't work, and I can't think of one. No, it's it's a group of words built around a verb. They can be complete sentences, but if you look at my um, the long sentence there, how it, how many clauses in that long sentence starting the old dog are there? Well, that's just one clause because there's only one verb, which is uh, sat. Um, it, the, to, to simplify, you say the dog sat on the table, but yeah. everything else just modifies either the dog, the old dog, um, where it's from, from yeah. next door, um, where's the table yeah. in the kitchen, by the sink. So these, those are just prepositional phrases. Uh, <laughs> it's easy. To the table. Yeah, it's easy to be caught out just. Count the number of verbs. There's only yeah. one verb. It's one. It's a dirty great clause. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, next one. Now, a tricky little thing. There's a technical thing called auxiliary verbs. Auxiliary, I think it was in the Second World War, there were auxiliaries, and these were people who sort of helped with um, with things. So auxiliary verbs are little, I call them little helpers, John. Yeah, so, so that one back two slides ago, three slides ago, am running. Am that's running, it. yeah. That's an auxiliary verb. The main verb is running. So the aux auxiliaries are the little helpers. 
he's running i i was running i do jump high she is eaten does he jump so he or he does jump so auxiliaries are the little helpers so you get a main bit um and then you get the auxiliary the little helper once you've got that idea it's fairly straightforward john okay auxiliary verbs okay modals now modal verbs are a type of auxiliary in other words they sort of go with the main verb um but um they're all about possibility we can go swimming this afternoon we must go swimming we might not sure if we may go swimming possibly so they do with possibility the modal verbs um, they're an interesting little category. So your auxiliaries are the little helpers and the modals are the possibility ones. And I've written, I've done a list of them there. Those are the main ones. I could help you. Possibly. I might help you. I should help you. Doesn't necessarily mean I will, but I should do. I must help you. I ought to help you. They sort of show shades of meaning, John. They're all about modals or all about possibility so <clears throat> if you said i have to help you have would be acting as a modal verb yes but it normally i have a cold yes and it's not acting as an it's just a normal verb in that context yes. but yeah. i have to help so um then you're at, yeah so you, so sometimes that could cause um slight confusion could have might be um might be either could be a normal yeah. but it could be yeah, a it's moment. tricky Lot, lots of words can fulfill different functions so the word green can be an adjective but it can also be the green because that's where golfers play on the green so it can be um a noun yeah so that's one of the tricky things about grammar words you only know actually you can only label it when it's in a sentence and you know what its job is. Yeah. yeah. OK, thank you. Last little bit, then, is our reminder about the determiners. Um, we worked on those last week, but there's those ones at the bottom, the, a or an. They're interesting. The dog. And then a dog. Now, if you say the dog, you're meaning the dog over there. A dog is any old dog. And just to remember, we, this has cropped up occasionally. If you're putting a in front of a word, a noun that starts or an adjective that starts with a vowel, a e i o u, you've got to do an. So it's not a apple, it's an apple. It's not a ant, it's an ant. You need a sign up there or something written in the back of your book just to remind yourself of that one because it, it's a little bit of a slippery eel easy to get wrong so that's a little summary john and we're on to the last padlet i think yeah indeed so we'll go back to there was a lot there a lot to think about might yes. be worth going over some of that stuff again, <laughs> definitely, again definitely um definitely worth looking through that um padlet three john yeah padlet three okay so now we're going to develop and expand our work the dog barks the dog barked while the burglars ran. After seeing the burglars, the dog barked. So we got a main thing happening here, the dog barking. So we got that. And we can either extend it at the end. The dog barked while the burglars ran. Or we can extend it at the beginning. After seeing the burglars, the dog barked. So we're going to create some clauses, some sentences with two clauses either by adding on at the end or the beginning, or you might even be clever enough to add on at the beginning and the end. I'll do the bus stop. So the bus stopped. I've got my list of words to help me. The bus stopped after the unicorn landed. Or I could say after the unicorn landed, comma, the bus stopped. So if you put a clause at the beginning, you go, you must have a comma after that clause to separate the two clauses. Now, you can do three. So if I had the bus stopped in the middle, I could say after the unicorn landed, the bus stopped 
and everybody got off. So that way I've got three clauses going on. So all sorts of possibilities here. You've got your main thing, the bus stopped, and then you've got these other bits which can come before or after. So I'm going to add one, and, I'm, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to write um, my first simple bit. So I'm going to just make one up, actually. I'm going to put the shark bit, and then I'm going to do it the shark bit after he after it saw the surfer and then i'm going to do the other way around after it saw the surfer comma the shark bit so i've got all three in one you could even add another bit you could go after it saw the surfer the shark bit it. and then extend the sentence using um a conjunction and away span, i'm away or something yeah excellent stuff now watch <laughs> out for that comma so gurjas i can immediately see after gri uh, grabbing his packed his pack lunch comma he sat down at the table but dylan after seeing the cheeseburger, uh-oh, you need a comma there, Dylan. Now, you, you, your sentence is fine, but it does need the comma, so you can go back and edit. Uh, Adam from Botsford, fine. He sat down at the table as soon as his mum called him. Um, the plane flew when the passengers were seated. Blaze from Botsford, Noah from Brindle Lane. The cat chased after the mouse while a burglar ran away. Now, you've got a comma in there, Noah, and you don't need it. Um, you would only, uh, your main cause is the cat chased after the mouse um, while a burglar ran away is your subordinate clause, full stop needed, by the way. Um, and that could go at the beginning, while a burglar ran away, comma, the cat chased after the mouse. If you put it afterwards, cat chased after the mouse while a burglar ran away, you don't need the comma. Uh, Shrianshi. That was a bit of a mouthful. Sorry about that, Shrianshi. Um, you've done the same. You've The dog barked before the man ran. So if you're adding after the main clause, you don't need the comma. Faith, have a look at your puncture. Have a look at your capital letters. There's quite a few people at uh, Oral Orly from Botsford done the same thing. You only need the comma. Mohammed uh, from Tudor, the same. You're putting commas in when you're adding the uh, main, you're adding your subordinate clause after your main clause. The bulldog barked loudly after its owner gave it medicine. Um, whereas Tia from Tudor, after the storm blew, comma, she screamed loudly. So the main clause is, she screamed loudly. After the storm blew is the bit you've, she's added, tears added. And because she's put it at the front of the sentence, she's put the comma in. So go back to mine, wherever that was. Have you have you actually edited it, Dave? There we go. The shark bit. The shark bit after it saw the surfer. No comma. After it saw the surfer, comma, the shark bit. So it's getting it... Get, Figuring out whether the uh, whether you're adding after. So the, if you write down your main clause first, that might help you. And Sam Furburn, who tells me it's his birthday, has done a list of five perfectly. Hold on, Sophie, yours is uh, spot on. So is yours, Aaron. So is yours, Zane. Carter, uh, Freddie, after the football match. That sounds like we need a comma there. Everyone left the stadium and went to their car. You need a comma. Um, Owen, well done. Tristan, you need a comma. Yeah, happy birthday, Sam. From Fairburn. 
Um, Ava, well done. After I saw you though flying next to me, Tristan, you need a comma. Karamvir, you need a capital letter and a full stop. Hold on, Charlie, you've sorted that. Rasmus has got it right. After the old granny fell into the black hole, <laughs> the mm -hmm. bus stopped. Hold on, Lucas, Evelyn. <laughs> stopped and... Up. Yeah, and so, so Rasmus, well done, you, you've done both. After the old granny fell into the black hole, the bus stopped, and the bus stopped after the old granny fell into the black hole, and you got the comma in the first one, but not the second one. That's that's spot on, Rasmus. So, Mohammed, you need to have a look for a comma. Well done, William. Now, Jack's yours is a little bit muddled, so you need to go back and put a comma in a really weird place. Read it aloud with the comma, and you need a capital letter and a full stop as well. So you need to go back and edit. Now, uh, Gurner from uh, TPS, the bus stopped. So you've extended that by adding an adjective, the red bus stopped, but that's still the main clause. The red bus stopped after the lady pressed the button vigorously. You've added that after the main clause, so you don't need the comma. If you'd written... After the lady pressed the red pressed the button vigorously, the red bus stopped. That's when you need the comma. Levi, um, bot from Bottisford. Bus stopped so the man could cross the road. Well done. So the man could cross the road, comma, the bus stopped. You can sort of hear the pause between the two things, the bus stopping and the crossing of the road. That's where you need the comma. And so, Felix from CSJ, you've got this one spot on. And it's actually quite difficult because if you think, if you if if I read it, as soon as he sat at the table, the waiter came, you think, OK, as soon as he sat at the table is the main clause. But it's not. The waiter came is the main clause. So, as soon as he sat at the table is the subordinate clause. So you've got the comma spot on. Um, so you could have written the waiter came as soon as he sat at the table, in which case you wouldn't need the comma. But because you put that extra clause at the front, as soon as he sat at the table, comma, the waiter came. Mariam, have a have a uh, and Desa, have a look at the spelling of long. I think we need to come out, John. We've only got three we minutes. Do. We do. I'm just getting quite carried away with all that. That's quite clever. D don't forget when it once you start, once we start to get tricky punctuation going on, people start to forget the basics. So there's a few missing full stops and few missing capital letters in there. But it's 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 it is tricky and it does need practice. And uh, so we'll quickly zoom into the blog challenge. Um. Now, next week, John, we're going to come back to clauses and commas. I think we need to have a really good look at those. So we're yeah. going to come back to main and subordinate clause. We'll have a look at all of that again. Uh, so we'll sort of have a, another go um, because it needs work. Now, we've got pairs of story sentences. Outside, the snow fell across the silent city. Inside, a fire blazed and the hall was full of laughter. Now, You've got a contrast there. You've got snow, so it's cold. And then you've got inside a fire blazed and the hall was full of laughter. So it's really warm. Then outside the rain and then inside the heat. So it's cold outside and rainy, but inside it's warm. Outside a grey mist wound its way through the streets, smothering the houses. Inside the children warmed their hands so you've got con two contrasting sentences and they are outside, inside, and you've got to get, remember the comma. Now, I just want to look at that one, two, three. If you look at the fourth one, it's outside the cave, a dragon paced up and down. And then the last one, outside the school and then inside the year six classroom. So you've just got to watch out for that. So those are prepositional phrases, aren't they, Pi? The outside and the inside, yeah. And then if you scroll down a wee bit, have I given you 
Oh, you've just got to invent some. Yeah. So let's so so um we had a similar activity last week which a few people struggled with. So if you're if your your sentences must begin with the the preposition outside or inside, you can change it to above and below but you need to have two your sentences must begin with the prepositions and if you make them prepositional phrases outside the cave comma inside the classroom uh inside the classroom comma um so much the better so it's prepositional phrases um in contrasting settings so above below inside outside um in front behind um now, my, my friend from Chorley tells me we did this last week, John. And what I want you to do is, can you come out of that and go to the teaching notes? Yeah. The, the activity will be in the teaching notes. Sorry about this, folks. Thanks. Um, Andrew told me that. I thought it was. Yeah, here we are. Here we are. Scroll back up. Back up. Back up. But stop. The bus stopped. Scroll down. Down, 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 down. Stop. The bus stop, the old lady got off. So on the left hand side, you've got two sentences. The idea is you join them together, either by linking in the middle or moving or, or at the front. The bus stop, so the old lady got off. As the bus stop, comma, the old lady got off. The rule sort of is if you start with one of those joining words like as, after, before, when, while, and you're going to need a comma after that first clause. So Bob ran down the road. He fell over. You've got to join them together. So either you say um, Bob ran down the road before he fell over or um, after falling over, Bob ran down the road. You've got to join the two together. If you scroll down, I've probably given you a link. Yeah. A link in words. The hardest is the third one. So you've got to turn that into one sentence and join the three ideas together. Right. So, OK, so you're using those uh, conjunctions and uh, prepositions to uh, to turn these two sentences into a single sentence. Yes. So, David, could you edit the um, page to, so that it's got that on it? It'll be done in less than one minute. It's uh, the So it's in the teacher notes on page six of the teacher notes. So apologies for that. Um and that means we've run slightly over time, but that was worth doing. So ignore those instructions that, that are on there currently, and they will be replaced by the instructions that are in the teacher notes. Um, so Bob ran down the road, he fell over. Um, turn that into a two sentences into one sentence. That's the game. That's the idea, John. And um, we will come back to main and subordinate clause next week looking at the commas as well because that is a tricky one we need to go over it all again so good work lots of good stuff but also some challenge now and obviously teachers you need to be thinking about where are the challenges in terms of your own class and therefore what needs a bit more practice as we go along yeah so so the the, the key one there for me was remembering that the comma you only use the comma when you put the subordinate clause before the main clause Absolutely. not after yep. so that, that that was a tricky little and that's the kind of thing that needs practice really but it's just just one of those uh little uh things about grammar that we all get wrong from time to time so that's it from us for this week uh we will see you next week for week four of teaching live grammar yeah Bye. well done everybody lunchtime Roo. <laughs> yeah, well done. That's all updated now. Great, thanks. Thanks, thanks, thanks David. Bye. Bye.